Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 40. I waited patiently upon the Lord, 
who stooped to me and heard my cry, who lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay, who set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure, who put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. reading from the first letter of Paul to the early church in Corinth. Paul, called to be a disciple of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. 
And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the, son, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the, two, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel is about discipleship. John the Baptist, fresh off of baptizing Jesus and seeing the Holy Spirit come down upon Jesus like a dove, declares to his followers, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A couple of John's disciples start walking behind Jesus, and Jesus looks at them and says, what are you looking for? They answer, Oddly, where are you staying? And he says to them, come and see. And at the end of the gospel, one of those, Andrew, brings his brother Simon to Jesus, who becomes a disciple, and Jesus renames him Peter. Really, two stories are going on here. One, about what it is to become a disciple choosing to follow Jesus, and the other one, what it means to be when one becomes a disciple. Now, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because the first words that Jesus utters in the Gospel of John is that question. What are you looking for? We hear that question all the time. If we've lost something and are searching for it, someone says, what are you looking for? We go into a store to buy something. The clerk says, what are you looking for? But when Jesus asks this question, it is far more deep and far more probing. What are you looking for in your life, your heart, and your soul? It's a perfectly good question, isn't it? Because all of us at some time or another have questioned our relevance to the world and to each other or whether or not our life, in fact, has meaning. And God knows we're certainly good at looking at all the wrong places and doing all the wrong things when in our heart we really do know that meaning and relevance comes from the Lamb of God. But these two followers behind Jesus are there and Jesus says, what are you looking for? And sort of answer a question with a question when they say, where are you staying? It's odd, isn't it? And in part they're asking because they want to be with Jesus. They want to learn from Jesus. But in a deeper sense, they also want to know what is abiding in Jesus, what's in his heart and life. And Jesus says, come, come and see. Now, many times we hear about inviting Jesus into our hearts, but when Jesus says, come and see, he's inviting us into his heart and his life, 
to see what's there and to see if we have what it takes to be a disciple. Now maybe over the Christmas holidays, you happen to see the long running show on TV, A Charlie Brown Christmas. It's been running about 60 years and when it began in 1965, it was the very first show that used animated characters. It was the very first show that used children's voices instead of a soundtrack. And when it was finally finished, only a few days before it was supposed to air, the executives at CBS <coughs> thought they had a disaster on their hands. And had it not been hyped so much and advertised so much, it probably would have been canceled. You know the story, Charles Schultz's Peanuts characters. Charlie Brown is trying to find the true meaning of Christmas. And Lucy says, well, why don't you put on a Christmas play? And of course, everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Charlie is mocked by the other children, and even Snoopy the dog derisively laughs at him when he puts the world's scrawniest Christmas tree up on the stage. And in all of that, Charlie Brown shouts, all that cynicism and commercialism, he shouts, does anybody know the true meaning of Christmas? Now, Charles Schultz had insisted that Linus read a scripture. The CBS executives resisted and tried to get him to take that out of the show, but he persisted. And so when Charlie Brown asks that question, does anyone know the true meaning of Christmas, up to the stage, walks Charlie's friend Linus with his security blanket in hand that he always has, asks for the lights to come on, and starts reciting the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. But that's not all, and it's easily missed. That when he gets to the part that says, fear not, when the angel says, fear not, he drops the security blanket. Probably the bravest thing that Linus has ever done. Being a disciple sometimes means that we have to give something up or we have to de-emphasize something because it's keeping us from being close to Christ. Something in our security blanket maybe that we have to drop. Maybe it's our job, our wealth or possessions, our influence or control over someone else, our reputation the number of Facebook followers that we have, the visits to the therapist, medication, addictions, whatever it is. It's something that we're holding on to to try to be safe. But we got to drop that security blanket and trust in Christ. Come and see. A few years ago, actually many years ago, when our daughter was about five or six, we were coming to church one Sunday morning I think we were late, as we often are, and we were running through the parlor to take her upstairs to Sunday school, and the coffee hour had all been set up in the parlor, and as we were going through, she says to me, where do the donuts come from? I was a little miffed because we were late, and I said, they come from God. <laughs> Without skipping a beat, she said, so that's why they're free. <laughs> Even at that very young age, there was an impression that the love of God was overwhelming, that the grace and mercy of God is abundant. And as a result, if we choose, if we come and see, we will see what God offers us, healing, forgiveness, love, eternal life. You can't get that anywhere else. And that's what gives meaning and relevance to everything else in our lives. And if we become a disciple, we become transformed. And when we become transformed, then we can transform others. Isn't that what John the Baptist was doing and that's what Andrew did when he brought his brother to Jesus, bringing them to Christ. And when Simon came to Jesus, 
Jesus gave him a new name, Cephas, Peter, which means the rock. And as another scripture says, this is the rock upon which I will build my church. And if you know anything about the life of Peter, he's front and center in the scriptures. He's always by Jesus' side. He's a leader of the early church. He goes on to start churches in Antioch and Rome as the first bishop of Rome and was then arrested, crucified, and now buried at the place where St. Peter's Basilica now stands in the Vatican, the largest church in the world. And yet we know that Peter had his faults and failings. When he was walking with Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, he doubted for a moment and began to sink. The night before the crucifixion, he denied Christ not once, not twice, but three times. And yet, despite all of those shortcomings, he rose up again, became loyal and steadfast, and became the rock upon which the church is built, the church of which we are a part. It's not easy to be a disciple, but if Peter can do it, maybe we can too. And maybe as a disciple, we will get a new name, a new role, healer, reconciler, prayer warrior, Stephen minister, lay leader, choir member, Sunday school teacher. Whatever the name, whatever the role, being transformed ourselves, we can transform others. Help others. Give others hope. Share the good news. Bring others to Christ. What are you looking for? Come and see. Every day, Jesus asks us to be his disciple, to be transformed and to transform. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all 
our elected leaders, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. <clears throat> May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Remembering Marilyn, the Campitelli family, Harriet, Craig, Jerry, Hal. We pray for Stephanie, Jill, Bill, Megan. For Andrew, Marilyn, Frank, Mari, John, Madeline, for Cindy, Edward, Marty, Barb, Connie, Bev. We pray for Bill, Dorothy, Sam, Ian, and Susie. For Wynn, Hudson, Beckett, Linda, Bill, Earl, Marilyn, Donna. We pray for Robin, Casey, Richard, Katie, Patty, Don. David, Elizabeth, Mary, and those we now name. We give you thanks for all the blessings of this life, and particularly for the gift of life itself. And we remember Edward, Aidan, and Lily on their birthdays, and for other blessings. Remembering those in our parish who have died, especially Jack, Yvonne, Patricia. We give you, give you thanks for the ministry of You Are Chicago, one of the outreach ministries this parish supports. May our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. morning. It's peace with, be with everyone. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you are welcome here at Holy Comforter. I want to welcome the children back in the sanctuary. Thank you for serving as our preacher this morning. Always a pleasure to have you as our preacher. Thank you very much. And Charlie will be with us next Sunday. And speaking of next Sunday, next Sunday is our annual meeting Sunday, and our service will have one service as we historically do on that day, and it will be at 9.15. You're welcome to come before 9.15 and pray. You're welcome to stay later, but we're going to have this service at 9.15 next Sunday. There is a way to participate in, with the annual meeting via Zoom, and there will be instructions about that in the e-blast. Are there any other announcements? Please take note of um, the ones in the bulletin. I think, Karen, should we talk about um, tomorrow? Okay. Well, I'm going to come to you with the mic. Hi. I think everybody's seen in the bulletin, and I hope you, if you haven't, I'm going to tell you about it now. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we have a uh, family community service project to help one of the ministries that we uh, support, Breakthrough. We're going to be making snack packs for their homeless shelters. So um, 
that we're going to start off with a presentation. We've got people coming from Breakthrough at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they're going to do a presentation in the library. And then we're going to set up um, some stations. So please come bring the kids. Don't leave the kids, like especially they're little. <laughs> but bring them. <laughs> so uh, we'd love to see a lot of everybody come and support this wonderful uh, organization and do something good on MLK Day. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and Joseph and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, our and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue our prayers with those worshiping with us virtually. My loving Lord, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I cherish you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, and in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. You are the bread on the altar. Be what you see. Receive who you are.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. Gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light unto the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.